Greetings, and here is part two of the Gwent developer stream. I know the patch already came out. Uh, this will be uh, uploaded today as long with the part one. Um, I'm currently working on part one while part two has been recorded, so I might be doing a bit back and forth with the editing uh, and the reacting, but I'll uh, make sure I won't get too distracted by it because I do like to give up my thoughts to you guys. Um, of course, let me know what your guys' thoughts are of like the upcoming patch and like, or not the upcoming patch, the patch and like sort of how it changes the uh, landscape of the game. In all honesty, I feel like um, scenarios are still going to be pretty powerful because they did mention that they're not going to change it too much. But anyway, let's get out. Uh, let's get on with it. That went quickly. Whew. That's a lot of talking, though. Yeah. All right. You're, You're trying to be efficient. People want the information, right? You stum stum oh, yeah. We, we all do. We all really, do. Really quickly. All right. Um, so what? Skellagenix? Skellag. This is what I was yep. waiting for. Skellagenix needs oh, some more I'm love. I'm typing Skellagenix. Like that is not a thing. Uh, <laughs> we'll just flurry. talk about it. The leader ability Reckless Flurry. Or Fury. There we flurry go. Flurry, flurry. Yeah. Uh, now ignores armor. A lot of people <coughs> complain that this leader ability lost a lot of power when we added armor yeah, to the game. Yeah, that makes it sense. much harder to get your bloodthirst with it. Now uh, your well, Reckless Fury. It, it's not just bloodthirst. It's just the overall value of the ability itself. Because if you're just hitting units with armor, then it's like you're gaining no value from the he leader ability. So it was either you made this... You increase this thing's ability, or you increase this thing's provision cap, or you make a change into its ability, and they so chose to this, and this is pretty good. So, so it's like much it. more consistent than it was before. Well, you're guaranteed uh, eight points. That's this also a good thing. Makes this archetype much more powerful than it was. Yeah. yeah? Uh, it gives it a yeah, lot of support. Yes, nice Bloodthirst has gotten a lot of support. SKR. That's probably the first thing yeah. that I'm gonna cover. What about discard? So, uh, I think this was almost uh, discard a joke when we were saying it. We want discard to be more of a, a tool than an archetype. We want yeah. it to be a way for Skellige to sort of control its hand and adapt mm -hmm. to it, not be an entire archetype that an entire set of card revolves around. I, I can see that. And yep. is useless with and it. And dropping power on the board uh, and stuff like we, that. We, we I haven't can see fundamentally that. changed that much with it right now, but it is just a general uh, philosophy that we're heading towards. Uh, we want it to, like, for example, contribute less to the board. Generally speaking, yeah. Although it, it you know, uh, I believe some examples like um, what's the mage? Uh, anyway, uh, the discard spell coral. Coral. Coral is staying yeah. as she is, for example. I think she might have a provision of power. Uh, I think actually. she does. She does. I remember. But her ability remains the same. Yeah. I mean, her engine is uh, relied on special for cards. Example, now so is order damage unit by two, cooldown two. Yep. Whenever you discard a card, reduce cooldown by one. So now he'll be more reliable regardless of whether you discard something or not. He okay, so we have a discard it. engine, which is not bad. Fits in line with a lot of other cards in this and other factions. Yeah. Kind of similar to uh, the uh, Elven and, uh, Warmaster uh, in the other um, change that we did. That's uh, really uh, quite specific in terms of ability. Is or Elven Swordmaster is now draw a card, then discard a card. Uh, if anyone's wondering, that's a switching of the order, and it has very significant impact. It really now does, yeah. you can discard the card you draw. If you switch the order, you had to discard something that was already in your hand. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise it makes no sense, because you don't know what kind of card you're going to get out of it, right? Hand, so. Whoops, you just lost a card. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it's better, it's more in line to, uh, to what other discard cards are doing, and uh, we feel like it's... A Not sure, I mean... <sighs> You, you, this thing gets played. You should be down to nine before you draw the card, right? So even if you do play this first turn, you should still be able to get its ability off, can't you? I don't know. Uh, we'll give it a shot, it's maybe. Stronger that yeah. way. Uh, I mean, well, they are developers. Skellige is like, getting a lot of work here, guys. Yeah. We really, we really felt Skellige was due Isn't Skellige for some love. Syndicates for the ones that got the most change. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. This update, we focus a lot on Skellige and Syndicate, and we will continue to focus on whichever faction we feel. See, the most, uh, I, feel I don't, I didn't think Syndicate needed a change. I really don't. That might be a hot take, but Syndicate is already really good because it, it has a very unique play style. So you gotta rely on coins. And their, and their gold abilities are actually pretty powerful. Morios is really strong. Philippa's really strong. Um, Passiflora itself is pretty strong. Sigim's Deekstra giving you all those coins is pretty strong. Um, what else am I thinking of? Diamantated Hounds. You know, Syndicate is a very, it's, I think it's the most balanced faction in terms of like the abilities that it has. It's just that Nilfgaard is just so freaking broken with the statuses that it's like it means nothing. Like Poison just outright destroys 
everything that plays units. So it's not so much that Syndicate needed a boost. I, at least I don't think so. Uh, but, it, you know, I uh, get to see what they have, what they did to it. But they just needed to either buff everything up to be in par with the already powerful artifacts or uh, um, nerf them down to sort of match the level. So that's sort of what, behind what a balance patch should be doing. But for Syndicate, I actually thought Syndicate yeah, was all right. We'll receive some love in your future updates. Syndicate's oh. just hard to play oh, if you don't like, you know, manage your money struggle. versus yeah, your yeah, spending of it. So uh, I'm not good at it. So. so I made a whole category of cards that changed to Bloodthirst. Yep. Uh, Dim on yeah, a lot of Skeleton cards have Bloodthirst now, which is really good actually. Enemy unit by one Skeleton's starting to get its own identity in terms of how it's played. If you do not have Bloodthirst to at least. It still plays as a 4 by uh -huh. 4 4 for 4 uh, If you don't do this change, it was a bit too much of a gamble card compared to the other ones that have the potential for a, yeah. or a ceiling of 6 for 4 uh -huh. uh, So this is a slight buff, but I think it's a meaningful one. On Create War Crier, ability has been changed to Bloodthirst 1. At the end of your turn, boost self by 1. Sorry. Uh, so again, this is... Like I said, I'll be doing a bit of editing while I... Uh, for Skellige to really care about uh -huh. Bloodthirst. Uh, as in having it's an also that, that values it. Okay, if there wasn't so much status or damage removal going on, I would be I would be really happy with this. Um, but I also thought that uh, Skellige has the strongest purifier in its pool in Grenist. So the fact that Skellige is getting all this engine and bloodthirst support actually is okay with me, uh, because Grenist is pretty good at um, keeping things in check or keeping the poisons in check. Uh, so if your opponent wants to destroy a unit and Gremis is in, they'll have to take care of Gremis first. And if they can't take care of Gremis, then their poisons are going to be absolutely obsolete. And Skellige just goes off with their bloodthirst abilities. So I'm actually okay with this. Uh, Wild Boar of the Sea, I think, is a really fun change. Uh, I remember, especially earlier last year, really trying to get this card to work, but it was hard to get value out of it. Sure. Uh, but now, There's going to be a lot of interruption. I apologize. Card. It's damage, all damaged enemy units by one. So everything that's already in, in the red text, let's say, will get damaged by one, and then damage <coughs> everything by one. Yeah. So it is... That could be a good finisher for, let's say, Patricidal Fury, because this actually sort of once uh, allows me to play patricidal fury early on in the round so you can get all your bloodthirst units off because let's face it your opponent's not going to be focusing on pinging on their own units they're going to be focusing on pinging down yours um so with patricidal fury in check you now have your bloodthirst up to three abilities activated for a lot of value and once you're sort of done with all the bloodthirst you can sort of have wild boar to see as a good cleanup so this actually gives it uh, Skellige a really good sort of last turn play um so yeah and it's super powerful i'm already strong. i'm already looking at this and i really think provision should be higher and power should be lower it should give you lots of bloodthirst it should because this can be a potential 22 for 11 if um uh, your I opponent's units are completely it's a swarm this killer finisher. this is a swarm killer filling up the board. it kills literally yeah, swarm uh, his provision did go from 10 to 11 but they think uh, it's still worth it i think it should i think it should be higher need to Nerf it a little bit in terms of provision of power, but I think this ability is much healthier. Yeah. But no, no, better, I'm definitely going to give it a shot. The change that we just did to Reckless yeah. Flurry, there should be uh, definitely a damage archetype or wounded uh, bloodthirst archetype entirely floating possible. around. Yeah. That's what bloodthirst is about. Uh, and the last change that I would consider bloodthirst related is the giant boar. Now, the giant yeah. boar always used to do deploy melee boost self by one for every damaged unit. We decided to add a bit of flexibility to this card by adding deploy ranged uh -huh. boost self by the amount an enemy unit is damaged so uh -huh. uh, even if this is a, this is an example of one of those abilities so like split abilities uh, that i really like because it's kind of similar to the other low, only the condition is pretty different out of good bloodthirst targets you can still get like you're free to use cards like delirium or giga scorpion concoction and giant boar will still get its ability off regardless that far fetched so it adds a bit more uh survivability to this card uh -huh. i actually like All this right. card honorable That's mention for yeah. bloodthirst we had this card bloodthirst and now honorable honorable yeah. mention for skelly again lots of cards have been changed that we're not talking about today or yeah. we would be making the stream way too long and i think it would get a bit dry yeah is skell skell was a simple damage card and uh considering lore where he's all brave and he runs in and he gets killed immediately by one hit we thought it was a lot more lore friendly, a lot more interesting for Skellige to make him a 
high power, lower precision card. It fits a bit what we do with other cards with Skellige. So he's a 10 for 7, but if he gets brought down to 5, he dies. Yeah. So I think it's just a fun... A good uh, thing I might like think about how to use Skell as a card is maybe use him as sort of discard bait. Um, use him as dis oh, sorry, no, disc discard fodder for, let's say, Burna, and then maybe bring him back with a Sigdripus right to get that 10 power off so he doesn't have to come from the hand. Um, and the reason why I would think of something like that is because you're... You, you, so this is something I learned from experience. You don't really want to use your damage cards at the very end because you want to end off with your very high, um, very high value cards at the end. And if you leave it, like let's say it's when Alls or Thunder is your last card, it's not going to do so much damage. Now, of course, on a scale, it's going to be really powerful. But you know, it's not like they're going to expect you to bring it back because it's like, <clears throat> why would you even have this card in the deck in the first place? You should discard it, right? Um, so that's a possible combo I could think of it. Another one was to possibly lock it, but. You know, Skellige's locking options are really, really bad. Um, so it's not really worth it to do that at all. Uh, you can also protect it with the Covenant of Steel as long as it doesn't get purified. That is another thing. So just being able to protect Skell is already a, kind of going to be a problem in itself. Change. It's a bit better than what he was before. It'd be pretty cool if they did like Bloodthirst, I don't know, Bloodthirst 4, Bloodthirst 5, Lock Self, maybe. Uh, yeah. To kind of but make up for that provision. But it makes yeah. sense. It makes yeah. sense. He dies yeah, a bit yeah. easier. Yeah. All right. Okay. And I think that's it for Skellige. So, NR. NR will be a quick one. Northern Realms. Northern Realms. Uh, we did very little for Northern Realms. A lot less than what people expected. However, oh my god, surprise, surprise. Uh, Pincer Maneuver is going from 15 to 12 to 3. We're nerfing that sucker down from 2 to 3. <laughs> it's just too popular. It's yeah. too easy. You'll notice with Yet the fruits of Isgit still has a lower provision cap than Pinsir Maneuver. Still I kind of think Pinsir Maneuver is Maneuver stronger. Is be a lot harder to auto win in this uh, next season's meta. Yeah. So. That's not entirely true. What provision changes mostly do is they just adjust the cards that you need to add to your deck. Like, you're probably going to see more Siege Ladders and more Ballistas as opposed to like seeing Carol Ballistas or Reinforced Trebuchets or whatever just because just to sort of compensate for that path. Uh, just to compensate for that provision cost. Um, but in terms of strategy, because no cards got reworked, um, the strategy is still relatively the same. People are still going to run Siege, um, Northern Realm Siege with Pincer Maneuver, uh, albeit probably not as high tempo as before because those three provisions are still pretty huge. Um, but it's still going to create a good enough swing for, um, the, for, the, for the person to get a... a a respectable lead so hopefully yeah. that makes you guys happy maybe that was one of the bigger ones maybe it wasn't Rodea actually yeah. that was the number one thing no, you guys wanted oh no no Rodea is a big one too Rodea was a big one uh, we're not planning on, on killing uh, play two cards in one turn type leader abilities, but we do believe that they were overvalued in terms of provisions. Oh, they were super valued. Uh, in honorable mentions for. I think if you just add cards that do similar abilities like that, maybe add more cards with the likes of Dandelion's ability. Like if you could boost Dandelion a little bit, maybe put his provision down to 11, I don't know. Um, cards like Royal Decree, Matal, like those cards that can draw. Uh, but yeah, Pinsu Maneuver with the two card abilities is going to be pretty insane. Um, but yeah, no, as long as you have a way to thin your deck down regardless of the leader ability, like you, you can get away with not using a two-card ability as your hero power, which is fine. As long as you can filter your deck with like your drawing cards. So. For Northern Realms, we did do a few other provision and power. But it's very valuable. Uh, I changes. personally enjoy this it myself. Eratus Adept, Adept got a subtle change. She only now gains zeal if you control a mage. She was she very annoying zeal. on charge decks. She felt like this card was supporting non mage archetypes she's easily. still gonna be annoying on so mage decks this, this doesn't this really do too much bit, but still allows her to reach the same potential if anything what this does is this slows down the control. this slows down the ability by one mm -hmm. turn the, at, at worst auto in, yeah auto strong yeah. yeah there's a couple more things but we won't be really getting into those because like hey, it's gonna be a different really... meta next month for sure ah uh, it's I totally guess, different if meta you guys, for sure. you guys expecting the next month to be exactly the same mobilization siege surprised. Totally not happening. Mobilization Skoyatel. siege. Like, That's gonna get even stronger. Yeah. What about harmony? What about <laughs> harmony? So what's what's the overall? We don't feel as badly about harmony as the community seems to feel. I, we do agree that it's kind of annoying that it's been at the top for so long, but we hopefully by bringing a few other things up, it'll Skoyatel's fine. It'll go down a bit. Uh, I think we will be nerfing some of their key tools a little bit. 
Uh, we won't go through all of them right now, but no. there won't be much significant. Uh, I think starting with Mystic Echo. Yeah. Mystic Echo, yeah. like Pinter Fair Mirror, enough. will go from 13 to 12. Mm -hmm. The double play will be brought down to that level. Uh, I think there is... Sorry, I'm pausing a lot. There's just a lot of things I want to say. Um, With Squirtel, the reason why... Well, the reason why I think Harmony was so powerful is because there are so many... Uh, four to five provision cards with harmony in them if we look at other cards that have those the, the, look at other um boost engine cards like monsters with thrive um assimilate for um milf guard there's not nearly as many of those for their corresponding factions as square tell i just feel like square tell not to mention their abilities are also really good you got trained hawk who can literally disrupt roll lock cards as a five provision which is absolutely insane with provision you got the Dryad that can do Poison, uh, which is already a powerful status as it is because of all the support they got. You got the Weeping Willow, which exactly does the same thing. Um, it's Harmony. Sorry, it's Harmony that gives off Poison, which is absolutely insane. So it's not just that there's a lot of Harmony uh, cards in Square Tail, especially those at the lower end of the provision costs, but also they have these secondary abilities that make them really powerful. And Control... Control decks are were pretty valuable in the last um, in the last meta, so you know. Sure, changing this is good, but Actually, I don't uh, think any cards got reworked. Line, so I'm gonna skip uh, to it now uh, because it does affect. Uh, Mystic Echo. Now that I think about it, is Novigradian Justice yeah. actually got a rework as well? Sure. Um, Novigradian Justice. Uh, this was for the dwarves. This was a big Mystic Echo problem with the dwarves in mm -hmm. the past. We'll get to that one later. Yeah, actually. we'll show it later. Uh, but that one also got a change, so it's not mm -hmm. as abusable with Mystic Echo. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I like how uh, they uh, um, used. Yeah, I like how they changed the card Harmony because of the damage it had two months uh, ago. That's Mystic crazy. Echo with the one provision or three months ago. So we've also nerfed Mystic uh, Call of Harmony by one provision. So yeah. from sixteen to fifteen. That's we'll yeah. be keeping that doesn't do too much. Frame. It should have gone down to 14, uh, I one think. One subtle change that we did that I almost wasn't sure was worth mentioning today is we did add a category slash tag to all the scenarios. Mm -hmm. They are now officially scenarios. Scenarios, exactly. So this, I believe, has an impact on Harmony decks. It mm -hmm. makes Harmony... It, tag that you would it adds an extra... Okay, so um, you kind of just made up for that. Trap, which is crazy. Things. We can we guess actually Dead Eye Ambush. Here. Yeah. Uh, Did I ambush has been changed to order spawn an elven Did I in Allied Row charge three? It's essentially the same leader ability as before. Mm -hmm. However, now there's not such a reliance on traps having mm -hmm. existed. Uh, we didn't feel like forcing you to convert a trap was adding significant layer to it. It was making this. It was. I think it was too slow. It to was justify. too slow. Mm -hmm. Uh, for reliability. Because reasons. you have to play the and traps first before getting this ability like traps, off. So. Again, like. Uh, like this card is more of a a mechanic and a tool inside of a faction mm -hmm. more than an archetype. Yeah, like it's yeah, more that's the, fair. The, now the, I understand the, the types of cards that they have access to, not a whole archetype being built around. Mm -hmm. At least for now, who knows what we'll do in the future? But that's our current uh, stance. Yeah. On traps. Okay. Oh. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, we talked a bit about turning tuning tuning down square tail a little bit. Um, in a section I'm calling Toning Down the Bad Boys. Uh, I'm sure there's some others you guys would have liked, but let's start with Yaven. Yaven has now been changed to damage an enemy unit by the number of elf units. Yaven in was insanely well. powerful. Uh, this doesn't fundamentally in change the card, it was crazy. but it does give it a ceiling. Mm -hmm. Right now it can only deal max damage based off how many ro cards in a row and not the whole board. Uh, it just brings it in line. So if this thing counts itself, the maximum power, the maximum value it gets is 13 for 7, which is totally fair. Uh, otherwise, it would be a total maximum of, like, uh, let's see, 18 maximum units. So plus 4 is 22 for 7. That's maximum. Obviously, you're not going to see a unit with that powerful, but, like, that was a, a super bit, high ceiling. Bit, so. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That makes uh, sense. I believe there's also a... Gives an incentive to play Yaven earlier in the round as opposed to later in the round. Yeah, so so Barclays. Barclays being uh, dwarves don't need to a row. As do well dwarves don't need to be nerfed scene. anymore. Come so on. We're just getting a slightly more reasonable ceiling on these cards. Dwarves are still uh, going to be unused willow. after this. It makes uh, no difference, you know. Strong, especially with harmony. 
Uh, we'll be keeping an eye on it, but for now, we're changing his power from six to five. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a minor nerf, but between all the power and precision changes we're doing, we're hoping that the meta will shift in a way where Harmony isn't as dominant as it is now. Oh, uh, it's still gonna be dominant. I am sorry, it, gentlemen. Still feel like I Harmony still think it's gonna be very dominant. Rampant at the end of no, during the next season, then we again, we it's just you're just shifting the cards that you're gonna uh, use. What I don't want us to do is I don't want that's really all that's and happening. Just kill an entire archetype within a faction I agree. by over no. nerfing and then slowly trying to bring it back up. Like it's a this is yeah. I mean, this is a long conversation we can yeah, have. Yeah, we could talk for days about this. Uh, yeah, I could talk for days too. Like an hour about these changes, because it's both very strange. Yeah, yeah. On and on and on and on. We could probably talk even more. And I think the the last tone down that we'll talk about really quick is both Etriel and Yorlega. So her and her uh, Lynx, I guess, have uh, their provisions increased by one. So I think everyone. That's fair. Feel yeah. These cards they were super powerful in terms yeah. of provision. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, you got Merlega. I think they both could do yeah. but again, um, slightly. Yeah. Uh, moving I, on I believe Etriel was again, the seven, the big removal, the and then Merlega was the spread damage. A more. Treon Boar has had a slight little addition to it. Uh, it now gains zeal if you control a Dryad. Hmm? Otherwise, I didn't think there was anything wrong with the Treon Bar Boar, but the same. However, it is now capable of going immediately down. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people might expect oh, us to they're kill okay. Oak or nerf Oak as well. I, I, I think I see what's going on. I think they buffed it right because, because they didn't have zeal in its previous version, I think. To leave them some tools. Uh, waters is something we'll also be keeping a look an eye out, but for now we're not touching it. Okay. Fundamentally, at least. Cool. Brocolon should have gone up, I think. Nilfgaard. The mighty empire of Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard's a faction that we haven't fundamentally reworked or changed much again ignoring uh minor provision power changes uh we decided to nerf and slave and <coughs> that's actually yeah no sort of i understand to a bigger conversation i'd like to have and that's everyone's complaining about pincer maneuver and you know harmony and, and and mystic echo but in fact the highest win rate leader in the game right now is enslave it's been like that for a long time true sure. but because i think either people are a bit more tired of it no. or it's not super popular right now. It's not seen as a problematic leader ability, but we see it as actually a bit too strong right now. The thing I saw with Enslave um, during the current meta was that it played sort of a psychological toll on your mind in the... I'm talking about, like, um, there were certain cards that you just didn't want to play because you knew that this was going to be the Enslave target. I'm talking about cards, like, engines, most, like, very powerful engines from the other factions, like... Um, what, I'm trying to think of a good one that I was afraid of playing. Uh, Imka from Syndicate was definitely an enslaved target. There was nothing you could do about that. Um, any engines really from uh, from Scoia'tael. And this actually makes the whole assimilate thing even better with enslave. Uh, because if you, let's say, enslaved a harmony unit, right? And you start playing bribery, and it gives you Scoia'tael cards that you didn't have, and it boosts up the Harmony cards that you stole with Enslave. So it's kind of going with the whole thing of Nilfgaard using your opponent's weapons against them. Uh, and Enslave was just that you were just scared to, that a card would come in, and it would just get enslaved immediately, even though when you, you have to play it on that turn to get its maximum value. Um, so you either have to give up that, or you give up... Um, or you give up a turn where you could have gained that value if your opponent had chosen not to play in slave. So it messed with your mind so, a lot, at you know, least for my is, experience I anyway. I feel like sometimes you guys are, are, are crying out, or you know, asking us to tone something down, not because it's necessarily too strong, but because you're tired of seeing it. No. And yeah, that's I'm also a sure thing. A lot of people just play in slave. Kill it with too strong of a provision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's yeah, fair. And but we are always keeping an eye on it. So Enslave, for example, Enslave, is yeah. one that we just feel like in the current meta is a bit too strong. For those of you still playing it and dominating, sorry, we're actually keeping track and we've turned it down. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then also uh, Double Cross, yeah. same thing. Double, tro double Cross got actually a provision increase. Bonus. It's struggling a bit, so we brought it from 16 to 17. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, even though I think it, it, it just needs a little... The, way, the, the thing with Double Cross, um, it's very predict it can get very predictable. 
um, because the moment you see double cards, it's like, okay, I want to get my very powerful combos out early because the opponent tends to want to play double cross when it's down to your last three cards. And if they see that your last three cards are bronzes, so it's like, what's the point, right? Um, especially if you have a very big power lead and they want to catch up with you. Uh, so they could end up, again, using your own weapons against you. But like, you know, if you're playing Square Tell, you want to make sure you play Great Oak before your opponent even gets a chance to double cross it. Or if you had Igni, for example, or Vernaciel or whatever. Um, you just didn't want to leave those as your last three cards. Or you didn't want to play them late enough that they come after your opponent already steals, uh, not steals them, copies them with double cross. So I thought it was just a bit of a predictable card to play with. A little with. edge in the or top predictable ability. to be viable. So mm -hmm. hopefully this gives it, uh, makes it an interesting choice. Agreed. Lastly, the one card that w that's received a rework in Nilfgaard is False Siri. Again, removing artifact removal from faction cards. Her Makes artifacts even stronger has now. Has changed I think. from remove an artifact to boost an agent by three. Yes, this change may seem insignificant, but it is in line with what we want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And wink, wink. I can't say more than that. <laughs> Tease. Mm, sorry. Mm, good. 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 Ah. Good. All right. Oof. Last but not least, it's a big one. Mm -hmm. Let's try to go through some of them a bit faster. Uh, so, Syndicate, right? Mm, the Syndicate. Syndicate is a faction that I think, if you really know how to play it, runs really well. But uh, I think the leader abilities is something that lacks a bit of mm, teasing on what you want to do. Okay. Uh, like a lack of... Uh, toughness and choice. It's too easy to go to, um, of course, wild card. And we wanted to play around with that. First, Congregate is getting a change. Mm -hmm. Instead of gaining coins at the end of using all your charges, you will gain a coin per charge used. Yep. So now it is a slightly more interesting, although more math. Yes. Figure out how Agreed. and when to use your charges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, kind of boosts up cards like Townsfolk, where now they'll be getting eight. three boosts mm -hmm. from Congregate uh, if you replay a coin. Other so you get it separate as opposed to an instance, uh, which I think is pretty good. It's good synergy with some of the cards that get boosts from really coinage. Cool. So, uh, Jackpot provision has gained, uh, has increased by one. So it went from 50. I'm sure they nerfed a wild card. Wild card must have gotten nerfed. Off the books also had a provision bonus change from 15 to 16. And wild card has gone down from 15 to 14. Yeah. So, so I have them all here. Oh, now wild card should be a bit more of a consideration. Not yeah. everything's a 16, but wild card. It's yeah. crazy. Again, coming to artifact removal, I think is the next card would be the tunnel drill. Yeah. Tunnel drill, I think was touted as the strongest artifact removal faction specific card. It has been 18 changed years to in the sewers. Profit one. I saw like almost nobody use Tunnel Drill as an artifact removal. It's crazy. See, that's the thing too, right? Because at the time, um, people were coming up with decks that utilized two card plays to just get all three chapters of the artifact off before artifact removal even came into the field. So I was like, what was the point of doing that, right? There was absolutely no point in putting in an artifact removal in the deck if your artifact could just get comboed by two card plays and by then they get their chapter two off before artifact removal even came in. So it, by the time you destroyed it, it had nothing left. It kind of used up all of its power. So what was the point of having it in the first place? Maybe that's why you didn't see much artifact removal like towards the end of the D3, meta. Three damage enemy unit by one, increase damage by one for each adjacent crown splitter. So it'll be able to do three damage for three mm -hmm. if you set it up with more crown splitters. Mm -hmm. uh, drill. Plunder. Eventide. Yeah. Eventide plunder uh, ability has changed. That doesn't do too much for me, I think. I'd gain four coins. If enemy controls an artifact, gain six coins instead. So instead of removing artifacts, you can still gamble with this tech card. Uh, it is not artifact removal, but it does mm -hmm. show that we're not afraid to still play with the existence of artifacts and other cards. So in this case, if someone is playing artifacts, you do get extra coins. Okay. So it has a bit Fair of enough. a flavor for Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, moving on to Fast Forward. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, scenario upgrade No one upgrade expected time. a change to a scenario. Uh, I think the designers were admitting to me earlier today that this is the scenario they had the least amount of time to think about and prepare. So they, they were passionate about upgrading it a little bit. Uh, it's completely changed. Uh, well, mostly changed. Uh, scenario, progress whenever you play a blind die, so the mm -hmm. condition has changed. Yeah. Prologue, spawn a sly seductress in this row. 
chapter one spawn a passiflora pichu. So you got Celeste Adoptress, you have Adriana the Mink, and you can also just play base Celeste Adoptress on its own to get multiple copies of it. I see. Um... Yeah, that might make Slice of Justice a little bit powerful now because you have another instance in which it can get summoned. Uh, so you could potentially have up to four copies of a Slice of Justice. I think five. I don't know if Ad I think Adriano of the Mink. No, no, Adriano of the Mink only lets you summon one. Yeah, yeah. Like if you let you summon two, that's a bit way too OP. Which is in this but, draw. But yeah. And chapter two. You have now another way of creating another points. Slice of Justice. So it should be a bit more easy yeah. to progress. I know I had a bit of trouble with. You know, the first two cards are cards that don't really use coins. Well, they don't use coins. They need coins, but they don't use coins. This one needs coins so that it can gain itself a shield, but its real engine really comes from whenever your opponent plays a plays a card. Uh, Pass Flora Peaches is just uh, keeping okay. having coins in your hand or nice, having coins nice. in stock. And its provision has been changed from twelve to fourteen to reflect this. Simple. And the last ability doesn't give you a card; it just gives you coins. So I kind of prefer to ease drop because you were able to filter with it. Moves like Hammond. Yeah, yeah. Moves like Hammond. Hammond, we felt like getting the change was pretty dull with Pirates. He's cross faction as well. And we yeah, like that's fair. He was bad. only going to be used yeah. with Skellig uh, so cards. To deploy, move an enemy unit to the other row and give it bleeding two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is better because, because now he becomes a pretty solid so um, row uh, really disruptor for row lock cards. So it's, it's a pretty six good. For eight that moves. Uh, it has some power on it. I think this will be an interesting card to consider both for Syndicate and for Skellige. Yeah. A lot more than it was before. Cool. And that's why we're making the move change. <laughs> Moves like Ammon. Uh, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Almost we're there. getting there. Firesworn. We'll talk about the Firesworn. Firesworn, there's two cards we've reworked to try and make that archetype a bit more interesting. One, excommunication has been changed to vanish an allied unit, then play the top card from your deck. I like this one. Was a fire I actually like Look this one. The top three cards from your deck and you kind of have tactical decision in here so, too. Uh, I believe this is essentially what it was doing before. Because you have a yeah, you have a lot of yeah. I think fire swarm might be a bit better now. I actually might want to play fire swarm again just to see what it's yeah, like. Which I think makes this card much more interesting than it was before. Oh yeah, I, I definitely uh, agree. significantly so. Looking at three cards and choosing one is a pretty strong effect. You can kill a two power token to do that. I think this card will be considered to be playable now for sure oh, i would definitely include it that's pretty powerful procession of penance penance uh this card felt like its ceiling was too low to be really interesting so what we did with procession of penance is we actually buffed it from 10 to 12 power however the initial damage he does to himself is increased but the amount is reduced for every fire swarm is also increased so uh, his range of power is higher, both at the floor. So now it only and takes. Ceiling, and mm -hmm. We hope this makes the card much more. Five fire sworn zealots yes. to kill. I think it used to be six. Don't you be needed six fire sworn zealots. Don't be tempted no. by that. I am. <laughs> but he's still vulnerable to tall removal, he's so that's still going to be a problem. <laughs> Ghoster, Delvagradi and Justice. So we talked a bit about this one before, uh, even though. It's not seeing much of use right now. We did have a big dwarf double engine problem in the past, especially for again. They're fixing a card for a problem that uh, came up three months ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so so this one they didn't really get used. Oh, looks like they they, re they reduced the provision. Okay, fair enough. From your deck. In fact, I think this used to be twelve. If you decide to pull a bronze engine from your deck, you might get more value from the cleaver's muscle. Mm -hmm. I think there's also interesting uh, implications with this card, and I believe the tunnel drill we were looking at earlier. This would give you the fair enough, yeah. The Crown Crown's Crown 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 can give you some synergy, synergy there, which is pretty bad, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, this is Boom. stopping us from allowing people to play two bronze engines from their deck with this potentially twice. So no, that was pretty powerful. Yeah, I thought that was, that was a so pretty powerful pretty ability. High power with the five shield. Yeah. Alrighty then, that was we made it to the end. Woo, that's a lot. Uh, I would say this doesn't cover half the changes we did yeah. in cards. Most of them were smaller. Again, there's a reason we bit faster. This was already a pretty. I think that was everything. Uh, long stream. We hope um, the meta shakes up really nice. We'll be doing probably a more minor balance update at the end of yes. this month. Uh, we, we we'd rather not do a major one like of this size every month. Uh, first of all, it's a lot of work for us. Mm -hmm. It's also secondly, we'd like the meta to stabilize a bit before we try yeah. to decide what to do with it. Yeah, yeah that's so fair. We will that's be fair. keeping an eye on. We we will try to listen. Let's hope Skellige rises back up. 
Let's see how Monsters Wild Hunt does after these changes. Agreed. And uh, so I'm actually gonna stop there. Um, I just thought I'd add the list here and just show, sort of show you guys everything. Um, it looks they did a lot of buffs to the cards that barely got any, uh, barely got any play. So you guys see that the dragons, like all these subtle provision changes really went to cards that showed no that showed no love uh in any deck so johnny and sarah both got power increases um which is actually pretty insane i don't think it matters too much i still don't think they're gonna get played that much i've been wanting to try a gay a deck with wolf's bane um and i think this might work well with an ability like uh onslaught or uh person not precision yeah, precision strike um, where you can, again, change the value of your opponent's unit so that it makes Wolfbane slightly more powerful. Um, you also need to be able to play with a deck uh, with a, with a deck that doesn't is not so swarmy because you want to reduce the chances of Wolfsbane hitting your own units. That's really what it's it's meant for, but I thought I'd, I want to give it a try. Um, Gontaro Dim got a, got a boost from 12 to 10. He, now, he's sort of on the same boat with Moral, but Moral just has infinite more support than Gontor does. So, Gontor, I don't see Gontor seeing that much more play, although I could possibly put him in a possible gimmick deck in the future. Um, yeah, everything else, King Cobra went from 4 to 5. I think this was mentioned, and the Moral from 9 to 10 was also mentioned. I like that. Um, they're still going to get used, but again, the opportunity, the support cards that they're going to get with it aren't going to be as powerful. Um, with Monsters, we sort of already went through Imlareth and the Wild Hunt. Which again makes a lot of sense. I like it. Keltalus got nerfed from 12 to 13. Um, Keltalus was mainly used in unitless monster decks. Uh, so now we could. There might be a chance we don't even see unitless monsters anymore. Uh, Wispis changed from 4 to 5. Wispis is the only one that got a change. None of her, si her sisters didn't get any changes. Huh? No Brewis, no Weavis. Okay, that's fine. No one really used the Crones anyway. So. Um, looking at Skellige, all of these were cards we've already seen. Um, Covenant of Steel now has armor, has now has two armor. So it kind of takes a couple of turns of uh, self damage before it starts getting its ability off. But if you did combo it with like the Covenant of Steel, oh sorry, with the um, Svelblood Priest, it was still going to get boosted with no damage taken from it because of the armor. So it just gives two extra armor if you choose to play uh, the Svelblood, Cult, Svelblood Priest from the Covenant. Um, Burner Brand, provision change from 10 to 8. Now filtering Skellige decks is going to be a little bit better, I kind of think. I'm going to see myself putting Burner Brand in certain decks. She's definitely a good way to filter your deck out, let's say, if your opponent dry passes round 2. Um, Blue Boy Lugos, provision change from 8 to 7. Um, so you can now easily add it now to self-damage Skellige decks. So yeah, Skellige got a lot of love. A lot of love. Morkvar got some love. Sacrificial Vanguard got love. Yeah, so uh, Skalga is a bit strong. Well, more than a bit stronger, but I'm not sure how it's going to fare against still some of the more stronger factions in the game. Um, Northern Realms, Philip of Blind Furry got a provision change from 11 to 12. So Falibor didn't get touched. Baron didn't get touched. Prince on Sace didn't get touched. The Kira Mets, if anything, Philip is going to get replaced with Kira Mets in most decks in terms of value. Um, so I still think Northern Rumps is going to be pretty powerful. So I don't know how I feel about this. Odrin. I'm not, I don't remember who Odrin is. I don't remember what the, oh, right. That's who Odrin is. See, if they had more warfare cards, I don't think there's enough warfare cards. There's, I mean, there is a bit, but I don't think there has, there's as many as like alchemy cards or, uh, spell cards, traps, I think. So I don't know. Warfare is not seeing a lot of love. At least not as its own archetype or anything. Um, Squatel, not too many changes. A lot of them are nerfs. Like Squatel got nerfed a lot. Like Bane Death went up. Dolbathan provision. Oh, Dolbathan Boom actually went down. So I guess that's the one love they got. It looks like everything else sort of went. Oh, and Pitfall Trap too, I guess. But no one was using traps anyway, so it is what it is. Uh, Nilfgaard. Um, Serid Provision went down. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So they're giving those Witchers a, a little bit of love. Albrecht got a little bit of love as well. I believe he's similar to the Fisher King in which you can move a unit to the top of your deck. So having that extra power isn't so bad. 
Trahirin Bar differ. I think this is the one where it's like I, th I think you choose one card to send to the graveyard. It, he's more playable, it seems, from here. So instead of uh, 8 for 4, it's now 6 for 3. Um, being able to move, again, it, 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 that could help with uh, Hyper Thin, with thinning your opponent's deck. So that might not might not be so bad with in the case of that. Vincent Ma Vincent Van Morlehem's power going down from 6 to 5 does kind of nothing. He's still going to get a crap ton of value if you poison like a really tall monster, a really tall unit. So it's still going to be used. Van Morlehem's Cupbearer, same thing. Even though you don't get as much power, provision cost kind of stayed the same, so it's still gonna get. It's still gonna be put because of its ability to poison and purify. Those are two of the most valuable um, mechanics in Nilfgaard right now, which is insane, so, and it will continue to be very valuable in Nilfgaard decks. Um, Syndicate again changes have already been mentioned. I'm just looking at the ones that haven't been mentioned. Uh, Sigir Rubin, Provision Fringe from 13 to 12. Syndicate already gets a lot of coins. They don't need Sigir Rubin. Sigir Rubin just sort of enforces it. It's not really necessary. Horse and Senior, though, going all the way down to 8. This is an interesting one. Uh, because he could summon those, um, cut-up lackeys. Which is pretty interesting. So that might make him more playable now. Uh, everything else is kind of like, eh. <laughs> Congregation going down from 5 to 4. So you can do 6 for 4 now with your Spire Sworn Zealots. So uh, that's pretty interesting. So now, now you're starting to see these six for four bronze cards appear a lot. So they're adding quite a bit of value now to uh, to um, bronze card or to four provision bronze cards, especially with the introduction of that of the new reworked pan, uh, epidemic or pandemic. Can't remember what it's called, where you can destroy a four provision unit, even though this is a spell. Um, but I'm talking about unit anyway. That was sort of the entirety of the uh, reaction for the new update 5.1 patch for Gwent the Witcher card game. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Any cards that they probably didn't touch that they should have touched. Um, the 100 subscriber video is still upcoming, so you guys look forward to that. If you guys did enjoy this video, please leave it a like and subscribe for more Gwent content. And other than that, this is Enzo signing out. I'll catch you guys in the next one.